Okay, so welcome to unemployment part three. Now we're at A2 level, a pretty high level at A2 as well. So we're going to look at some tricky concepts now to do with unemployment. But don't worry, they're actually quite simple once you get into them. Now a key concept that we need to know about is the natural rate of unemployment, which is also known as equilibrium of unemployment. We'll cover that. We'll also cover disequilibrium unemployment, two types, classical and cyclical. So, let's start off with this important concept of the natural rate of unemployment. Now, this um, is equivalent to, to what we also call the equilibrium level of unemployment, and it's based on this simple idea that at the prevailing wage rate, people will maybe not choose to take a job, and therefore they're choosing to be unemployed. Um, this is the prevailing wage rate here, WE, and you can see the labour market is in equilibrium. Here's the aggregate supply of labour equals the aggregate demand for labour at this point here, and this we have therefore the employment level EE. And so this is the equilibrium, hence the term equilibrium on employment, because here we have the labour force, the people who are in the labour market, who are able to work, but not economically inactive, they're looking for jobs, searching for jobs, but they're not prepared to accept one at that wage. Um, they may be not prepared to retrain, to relocate, or they still haven't found the job they want, and they won't take one at that wage rate. So we have this unemployment A, B, and that's the natural rate of unemployment. In the UK, estimates vary, but it's generally around about 5 or 6 percent of the labour force. Um, so you need to distinguish between these two lines. The labour force is everybody who is ready, ready and willing to work, um, but at the prevailing wage, only at A, do we have everyone who accepts a job at the prevailing wage. So the aggregate supply of labour, your, your, is really the number of job acceptances as another way of looking at it. So we have A, B. Now how do you solve this problem? Well, a great solution would be to introduce supply side policies um, which will make the labour market operate more efficiently. So for example, you could um, reduce the poverty trap by reforming the benefit system, you could um, reduce the power of trade unions, you could improve incentives through taxation, um, to take a job, so uh, for example reducing national insurance payments, um, or you could indeed encourage and uh, have a more relaxed approach to labour migration. Now if you were to do this, what would happen in this time? Well AS would simply shift to variety, let's see if we can draw this. AS would shift from ASL1 to ASL2. And at the prevailing wage rate here, we end up at point C, um, and say this is £100 a week pay, we end up at point C here, and look what's happened. We now have a reduction in the level of the natural rate of unemployment, or the equilibrium employment. And before it was E1 minus EE, and now it's E2, uh, sorry, it's E1, minus E2. So it's, it's reduced from A to B to C to B as a result of supply side policies um, that are operating in the labour market. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, another key thing to point out about this time, like we'll notice as wages go up, more people in labour force will accept jobs because it's more, more worth the while, we have more incentives to that as wages rise. So hence the aggregate supply line will tend to slope more steeply than the labour force line. Right, so that's the important concept of the natural rate of unemployment. And now we come to two types of disequilibrium unemployment. This is equilibrium unemployment, and we're going to look at two types of disequilibrium unemployment. The first type is classical unemployment. Now remember, classical unemployment occurs 
perhaps because of very strong trade unions are high benefits or a high national minimum wage, and this pushes the wage up above the equilibrium level. So we effectively form a new aggregate supply line, which I've now drawn in here. And then as a result of this, of the power of trade unions, people say they don't want to work for £100 um, a week, say they insist on working for £125 a week because perhaps of high benefits, um, because uh, of a more militant approach from a trade union, or perhaps because um, uh, of the national minimum wage being set too high. So look what happens. We end up with this unemployment here, with E1 minus E2. This is the level of excess supply at this higher wage above the market clearing wage, and therefore we have this disequilibrium unemployment which we call classical unemployment. Uh, again, the solution to this is um, tackling uh, excessive trade union power, perhaps tackling uh, benefits, that, um, the benefit system that isn't working effectively. Um, so this is one type of dis disequilibrium unemployment. A second type, of course, of disequilibrium unemployment is what's known as cyclical unemployment or Keynesian unemployment. And here we've got aggregate supply again, we've got aggregate demand for labour. How do we show this? Well, simply by a shift of the aggregate demand for labour to the left. Remember, labour is a derived demand, so if the aggregate demand in the whole economy shifts to the left, so will the aggregate demand for labour. And then at the prevailing wage rate, okay, we end up with this unemployment A, B. And so we now have unemployment E1 to EE, okay. um, and we have a full unemployment, and a full unemployment, yes. So that um, this is cyclical unemployment, often known also as involuntary unemployment. And of course, the solution, or well, one solution might be, as with some blue, more conservative solution might be, uh, if, if wages were flexible, they'd fall back to this new equilibrium, wouldn't they? But the problem is that wages are often sticky. People are reluctant to have a cut in their real wages, which is what we put on the left here on the graph. Um, and so if that doesn't happen, another solution might be a shift back with uh, a reflationary fiscal and or a reflationary monetary policy, we shift aggregate, but aggregate demand for labour yeah, the average demand for labour will shift back to this position here. Okay, and we move back here to our situation of full employment. And the situation of full employment means there's still people unemployed, but it's simply when the aggregate demand for labour equals the aggregate supply for labour. Now remember, again, if we draw on the labour force here, we still have Whilst we've got this disequilibrium unemployment yet, A to B, because it's cyclical unemployment, we also at the same time have equilibrium unemployment, the natural rate of unemployment, which is always with us, which is B, C. And so um, the solution to cyclical unemployment will be different to classical unemployment. But if you remember, the natural rate is equivalent to frictional and structural unemployment, which you study at AS level. And the classical unemployment is, a third, is another type, a third type we've studied at AS level, as a cyclical unemployment. So this is a more sophisticated explanation uh, of unemployment. And the concept of natural rate came about as a result of the Nobel Prize won by Milton Friedman, for example. And it's a useful concept to use in the exam because the policy solutions to the natural rate and to classical or supply side policies and the policy solution here to the cyclical unemployment is probably on the demand side unless you can get wages to be less sticky. So I hope that was fun and thank you very much.